why do ghosts or, uh, wear clothes or sheets instead of appearing in the nude? Isn't that a good question? When someone dies, they leave their material possessions behind, apart from their clothing, it seems. They can't take anything with them. Shane McCorristine says, when you think of ghosts, what comes to mind? A ghastly, moldy, wind winding sheet, a, a malevolent pile of supernatural armor, or a sinister gentleman in a stiff Victorian suit. In 1863, George Cruikshank, the caricaturist and illustrator of Dickens' novels, announced a discovery, quote-unquote, concerning the varied appearance of ghosts. It does not seem, he wrote, that any of us has ever thought of ghosts absurdly and impossibility of there being such things as ghosts of wearing apparel, Ghosts cannot, must not, dare not, for decency's sake, appear without clothes, and as there can be no such thing as ghosts or spirits of clothes, why then it appears that ghosts never did appear and never can appear? Why aren't ghosts naked? This was a key philosophical question for Cruikshank and many others in Victorian Britain. Indeed, stories of naked or clothless ghosts, especially outside folklore, are exceedingly rare. Skeptics and ghost seers alike have delighted in thinking about how exactly ghosts could have form and force in the material world, just what kind of stuff could they be made of that allows them to share our plane of existence in all its mundanity. The image of the ghost as a figure in a white winding sheet or burial shroud has retained its iconic status for hundreds of years because it suggests a continuity between the corpse and the spirit. The main social role of the ghost before the modern period was to carry a message to the living from beyond the grave. So the link to burial cloth seem, makes sense. This can be seen in the medieval trope of the three living and the three dead, whereby some hunters encountered their future skeletal corpses wrapped in linen, uh, in linen admonishing them to remember death. Yet by the mid-19th century, with spiritualism and early forms of psychic research spreading across the Western world, people began to report seeing ghosts dressed in everyday and contemporaneous clothing. This raised problems for those interested in investigating the reality of ghosts. If the ghost was an objective reality, why should it be wearing clothes? If the tenets of spiritualism were true, should the soul which has returned to visit the earth not be form formed of light or some other form of ethereal substance? Were the clothes of spirits also spiritual? And if so, did they share in their essence or were they the ghosts of clothes in their own right? You could adopt an idealist position and say that the clothes were metaphysical ideas bound up with the immortal identity of the wearer, the identity of the ghost meaning, ghost meaning something more than simply the, appar the apparition of a soul force. Another explanation was that ghost seers dress the ghost automatically through unconscious processes, and so we see a ghost in its usual dress because that is the mental picture we have of the person, and this choice of garment is most likely to inspire recognition. The critic and anthropologist Andrew Lang drew comparisons between dreaming and ghost seeing in 1897 when he stated that we do not see people naked as a rule in our dreams, and hallucinations, being waking dreams, conform to the same rule. If a ghost opens a door or lifts a curtain in our sight, that too is only part of the illusion. The door did not open, the curtain was not lifted, it was produced in the same way as when a hypnotized patient is told that his hand is burned, his fancy then begins begets real blisters. For Lang, the clothes of ghosts were the stuff that dreams are made of. The implication of this, that ghost seers are dressers, not, but not undressers, seems to reflect a pervading morality of ghosts, whereby most 19th century spirits were sanitized and chaste. Lang's odd assumption that there was no nakedness in dreams echoes this. The matter of spirits... Fashion and clothing were central to the identification of class, gender, and occupation in the Victorian period. The ghosts of the servant class seemed to be especially tied to their clothes rather than their faces or voices. 
a theme that comes out in some ghost reports submitted to the Strand magazine in 1908. In here, a ghost seer reported seeing a figure which had nothing supernatural about it, being simply that of a servant in a light cotton dress and with a white cap on. The whole figure had the general appearance of a housemaid, so that she had been the one I had thought of. It was not in the least like the cook, who dressed in much darker cottons. Clothes identify people and make them capable of representation. Nakedness disrupts this means of instantly categorizing someone. The issue of ghost clothes is interesting for historians of the supernatural because like a loose thread, pulling at it starts to unravel some of the assumptions about matter in spiritualism. Do ghosts retain the injuries or disabilities that befall them in life? And what about the erotic fleshiness of spirits, the touching and kissing between the living and the dead in the seance room and the ectoplasm, the gauze-like spiritual substance photographed emerging from the orifices of mediums? Could the living even have sexual intercourse with ghosts? These kinds of naughty debates have not disappeared in the 21st century. Indeed, spectrophilia, or the love of ghosts, is a fetish that is a lively topic of debate on the internet today. Another turn of the screw is the long history of how spirits matter in the world of the living. This is from the conversation here under Creative Commons by Shane McCorristein, reader in cultural history at Newcastle University on Unexplained Mysteries. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.